Let me uh, thank each and every one of y'all for being here. I can look across, and I want you first to know I'm John Whitmire, a public servant. And I know where I'm called. And I've gotten a call from Houstonians to leave the legislature and come back and be elected mayor of the city of Houston. I accept that call because I'm a public servant. About a year ago, we were in a reception much smaller than this, and I was very honest and transparent with my constituents. Yes, I was running for re-election to the Senate because I thought it would be important, but I was very honest with them. After the Senate race, I would run for mayor. I thought they were entitled to know that. And at this time, I'd like to thank some of my mayoral opponents who quickly got me a Senate opponent. <laughs> they didn't know they were helping me because I crisscrossed this city in the Senate campaign listening to Houstonians. And I know what their concerns are. And I know what you, that you know what their concerns are. But at that reception a year ago, I explained how I made that tough decision to leave the legislature. I love being a state senator. Number one in seniority, a chairman, the dean. I've got two colleagues, Boris Miles and Carol Alvarado present, as I've got Anna Hernandez and other state reps. I like my work. I've been fighting for Houston for 40 years in the Senate and 10 in the House. But I love Houston more than I love being a state senator, even when I'm respected. So last year I was explaining to how I got involved in the mayor's race. I got a call from constituents, people I respect, I listen to. And they said, we were playing the name game at our Saturday morning breakfast group, and your name came up, and everyone said, Whitmer can unite us. We want you to run for mayor. I said, no, I like what I'm doing in the Senate. Got some unfinished business. I got grandkids. So tell them thank you, but not at this time. The next week, I got a call, and they said, the group wants to know what it would take to get you interested in running for mayor. I said, well, that's a tricky question. I paused because it was a serious question. I said, let me tell you what. Get in the car with me and let's drive across Houston, like we all do each day. The homeless issue drives me nuts. I know we can do better. I told that call that Saturday morning, we've got to help the homeless, help Houston by getting them off our streets, and then I moved on to illegal dumping. I had just been Amando Wally. Thank you for being here. I had just gone to the first day of school after COVID. Highland Heights Elementary in Acres Home. Beautiful new building, beautiful kids. Everyone was there, the superintendent, the mayor, congresswoman, me. And as we were leaving, I told Glenn, who was working with me, Look at that pile of trash right across the street from the, high school, from the elementary school. Unsightly, unhealthy, impacts the esteem of the children and the community, and also blocks the ditches drainage. I said, Glenn, if I was the mayor or county commissioner, that would be gone this afternoon. It's still there. And then I moved on to neighborhood safety. I live by Memorial Park and Blossom crosses Westcott and has become the main entrance into the park. Someone's going to get killed there. They come around the roundabout about 60 miles an hour. If you think you're clear from a car, there's a stroller or bicycle or jogger that's going to get hit. And I started talking to the city three years ago. They told me first they didn't have the money. I said, I'll help you find the money. Then they said, well, we hadn't had enough accidents. I said, well, you're going to have a tragic one. Ladies and gentlemen, if I can't, as a state senator, get a crosswalk for neighborhood safety, no one in Houston has the opportunity to get a crosswalk. So I got worked up, kind of like I'm doing right now. 
And I told the caller that Saturday morning, you talk to your friends, I'll talk to my friends, we need to keep it low key. I do want to get reelected to the Senate. We had a redistricting session. And next thing you know, I started calling firefighters, police officers, the GLBTQ community, my minority friends, and it's just taken, it's taken off. And you are witnessing tonight a game changer. You are part of a game changer. The energy in this room is evidence that we're on the right path. Now let me quickly mention what I have discovered. Those are the three issues that I focused on a year ago. And of course, I finished that reception saying, if we don't address public safety, None of these other issues really matter. Ladies and gentlemen, I am more convinced tonight than I was a year ago that I need to run and be elected mayor. Because what I have discovered, it's not just homeless and illegal dumping and crosswalks, but our streets are in horrible conditions. I hear about it everywhere. I see it. I traveled in from A-Leaf to downtown the other day. There are stretches of Richmond. You nearly have to come to a stop. A great city doesn't have to have that. Flooding last week, a two and three inch rain will shut down some of our thoroughfares because we haven't maintained our drainage system, a maintenance system. If you look in your neighborhood, we've lost about a third of our capacity to the grass clippings and debris that's blown in and we probably hadn't had a real maintenance of our drainage systems, system since Bob Lanier. I can move on and on into other issues. City services. We probably got millions of dollars of lost revenue sitting on someone's desk because they can't get a permit. It's a huge concern. And I will move on and on with other issues, but I know who I'm talking to. You travel across Houston, and it's community-wide. And let me suggest that there are some people that don't want me to get elected mayor, and they're going to come after me. It's not going to be easy because I scare them. Because there are people that like the status quo, you see. There's people that like the way the city's being operated because they're profiting real well. They know if I'm mayor, it's going to be fair, transparent, honest, and play no favorites. So I could spend the rest of the evening talking about what a great city we live in. We all choose to live here. And Councilman Pollard, I could go on about the Med Center with its expansion, its bio-research, TMC3, is unbelievable. You need to go out OST and look at it. Our port leads the nation, and now with the widening, I just saw our enterprise got an offshore terminal. We're going to start sending propane from Texas to help people in India and Africa get off of their wood-burning stoves, clean the air in those communities. NASA with the space port, it's going to be exciting. So Houston's best times are ahead of us. But if we don't address the issues that I'm bringing up tonight and fix Houston and make it work, it will never be the great potential that I know Houston's future allows. Now, one thing someone asked me to start and finish this on, and it's actually kind of in the middle, the ability to govern. The election should be based on experience, contacts, and I promise you I'm the only one in this race that during a crisis, and unfortunately we'll have some in the next eight years, it will be man-made or natural. Houstonians, who would you like in the middle of the night to call the governor's office or the DPS? Who would you like to call the leadership in Austin? and say, Governor, we need somebody down here by sunup. There's only one person that can do that, because I've been doing it my whole career. 
You can't, during campaign, make personal attacks on people and then expect them to work with you. And getting back to Harvey funds, Don Buckingham, a colleague of mine in the Senate, just got elected land commissioner. She and I have already started talking about hitting the restart button and allow Houston and Harris County to get its fair share. See, my job will be to remind the governor and the leadership in Austin that as Houston goes is how the state will go. I promise you. In closing, public safety. I'm not going to get in a squabble with other elected officials about what the numbers are. The bottom line is we have a crime issue in Houston, Harris County. All you have to do is start talking to people in this room. I go to Yale Street Pharmacy on Yale and a senior citizen couple comes up and says, Senator Whitmire, you've got to run for mayor. We're afraid to leave the house after five. I see it everywhere I go, and it does not have to be like that. A great city does not operate like that. We are not New York or Chicago. We fix our problems in Houston. I spent, I spent Thanksgiving night with firefighters on Greg Street off of Lyons. We've got to address the firefighters' concerns. They were in the Supreme Court today. We don't need our firefighters litigating the city in the Supreme Court. We need to sit down as Houstonians, respect firefighters, make sure they have the equipment and the benefits that they need. We are having a very difficult time recruiting firefighters because of their low wages and lack of resources. In fact, occasionally, I'm told we train them, they get out of the academy and go to other cities where they're better received. We will sit down the first day and work out an agreement with the firefighters. They won't get everything they want, but we'll certainly respect them and sit down in the room. Police officers, the discussion is getting more officers on the boots on the ground. First thing I'll do, if not the first day, the second day, break them up into two groups. There's a little less than 5,000, which should concern us. We just went below 5,000 for the first time in recent history. I will get half in the George Brown in the morning and half in the afternoon and say, officers, you've got to buy into our crime problem. I know you're working hard, but you've got to help Houstonians solve the crime issues. And I think with a boost in their morale, knowing that we're going to hold them accountable, we want them to follow their training, but we also got their back covered, I think you'll see police officers cover the city and do much more police work. One other idea with my vision and experience. We've got 87 police agencies in the city of Houston. We could spend the evening naming them. 13,000 peace officers. If we had the leadership in the city with a chief that would bring them together, a mayor asking them to work together, this is my experience and vision. I was here when we had a park police and an airport police. To maximize their usage, we brought them into HPD. Metro has 300 officers that patrol largely the Metro lines. Wouldn't it be very beneficial to incorporate them in some neighborhood patrols? <laughs> HISD has about 280 officers. Spring Branch, U of H, TSU, the Med Center, RAS, the Port. We have an army of officers, but they do not talk to one another. They're not even able on the same frequency to talk. So, folks, we've got a lot to do. It's not just boots on the ground. It's resources at the courthouse, the cooperation of the judges. I don't know that you know, because see, a lot of elected officials don't want to talk about their problems. I'm of the opinion you never fix something if you don't admit you've got a problem and, and go transparent with it. Municipal courts, the first floor, there are still four courts shut down from Harvey. The ticket traffic revenue is about the second thing the city receives revenue on after property taxes, then sales tax, and then the court system. We've got courtrooms boarded up on the first floor. That's the reason you can drive by a memorial and see 
the court still open at 11 o'clock on Thursday night and people have to cross Houston Avenue to go to their cars. That's unacceptable. We, our, our citizens deserve, deserve more. Now, like I said a moment ago, I'm not going to get into debate with colleagues in other levels of government, but I know criminal justice. It's a system. Any component of the criminal justice system that doesn't work, it affects all the way downstream. Yes, we need additional officers. We'll find additional officers. But what we've also got to do is have our forensics, our crime lab with additional resources so the DA is not waiting for the evidence to be tested, whether it's a DWI or a shooting, bullet casing. We've got to make the entire system better funded and streamlined. Now, if someone really wants to get in a debate with me about public safety today, which they'll lose, <laughs> there's, there's 1,956 murderers or capital murders waiting to go to trial. Now think about that. First off, there's 53 capital murderers out on bond. In my entire legislative career, working very close with law enforcement and district attorneys, it's unheard of for a capital murderer to be released to the streets because he or she knows if they're convicted, it's going to be a life sentence without parole or the death sentence. So they're a flight risk. But worse than that is they don't want to be captured because they know the consequences. Many of them are repeat offenders. The capital murders are the worst of the worst, and we've got 53 of them on the streets of Houston. 900 folks are on the streets of Houston charged with murder or capital murder. And in all due respect to some of the efforts of our local officials, it's great that but you've got bodyguards. The people I represent don't have bodyguards. They're worried about their family. I spend a lot of time with the crime victims. It's unbelievable to be with a family that loses a nine-year-old baby girl because someone discharged a firearm. And then the Bushes lost their son because of road rage. We've got to all work together. Now, as I said a few moments ago, it's going to be a tough campaign, but I'm up to it. It's not my first rodeo, but I need your help. I need your support. I need you to talk to your friends. We've got a year to go. I want you to tell the firemen and the policemen that helps on the way. I want you to tell Houstonians that helps on the way. I want you to tell the families that helps on the way. And ladies and gentlemen, let's go to work. Thanks for being here.